Productivity for coders. Now, admittedly, I'm not the most productive individual in the world, but I like to believe that I've picked up a few things along the way that I think could help y'all's productivity when you're coding. And these aren't gonna be very broad topics. I think these are rather specific use cases that you can actually take into your coding process to help you be just a little bit more productive. All right, so let's talk about these coding productivity hacks or tips or whatever you want to call it. It's not going to be as structured as I would normally like to make these videos because <laughs> there are a few things I want to talk about, but there's so many different ways to talk about these things. So the first and foremost is like code only what's necessary. I have a bad habit of coding and frankly writing as well, but let's talk coding here. I have a bad habit of coding and then kind of reading back through that code block and trying to refactor it right after I, I basically completed the task. And then I'll reread it again and then refactor it again. And I'll just try to make it better and better and better and better until it's basically as perfect as I can get it. But that's kind of a waste of time. Like it's good to write good code, but as long as you can write clean code and accomplish the task at hand, you don't need to continually go back through that code and refactor, refactor, refactor. There are times where code smells may, may occur or there's an update to the standards of the Java language where you need to refactor things and, and keep them up to date, but you don't need to do that as soon as you write it. Write the best code you can as well as you can in the time frame that you allotted yourself for that task. And remember, you're always gonna be submitting it to code review. So obviously you wanna write the best code for that code review, but also submit it to the code review if, as long as it's getting the job done. And if there's a, a need for someone to change it, then someone reviewing that code will speak up. There's nothing wrong with, uh, maybe you could have done this a little bit different because hey, you did it, you got the job done. And if you need to do it a little bit different, you can, okay, you can do that. But what if they say, okay, that looks good, then you're not wasting all that time refactoring the code. So to be clear, refactoring is good. You just don't need to do it right after you initially code it. I don't know if everyone will agree on that. Maybe, maybe not, but that's my take on it. And to continually touch on the fact, like just code what is necessary, it's kind of easy to take on a task or you're adding a new feature and you're like, oh, I can add this and this and this and it will complement the new feature so well. Don't do that. Don't add any unnecessary features that the client or your boss did not request. Because when you do that, while you may think that you're overachieving, it could easily be seen as you're spending four hours on a one hour task. You may have added all this different stuff, but all this different stuff was not asked for. The actual task at hand, that's all you're supposed to do during that task. Nothing more, nothing less, that's it. And I don't think this is a bad mindset to have. It's one thing if you're working on a personal project and you just kind of let your imagination take you, that's different. But if you're trying to be the most productive, if you're trying to get, you know, if it is a personal project, you're trying to get that MVP out as soon as possible, or actually that's a good way to think about it. Just try to get your MVP out instead of adding all these different features, just get a nice, minimum viable product, something that will work. And then you can start adding these features because if you are working on a personal project and you want to release it to the world, you don't know exactly what they want until you hear about what they want. So give them minimum viable product, hear the feedback, and then you can start adding things. It's the same idea with a client or working, just work. If you want to be productive, just work on the task at hand. That also makes me want to say, and you'd be surprised how often this happens. Don't overcomplicate your code to make yourselves appear smarter. Some people do that. Always remember that simple, easily readable and reusable code is better. Let's talk about tools. I remember when I first got started programming, I kind of wanted to steer away from like frameworks or new technologies or anything that would make my job easier because I wanted to learn everything, which isn't a bad mindset to have, you know, wanting to learn everything because that just means you're optimistic and, and just ready, ready to learn. However, you also have to know that these industry standard tools and frameworks and technologies are used by professional software developers. That is exactly why they're standard. There's no need for all of these different people to recreate everything from scratch if there's a library that can do that for you. So don't worry about, oh, I don't really feel like I accomplished much because all I did was import this library and that's doing most of the work. Well, you imported the library, you implemented and you got the job done. It may have been using someone's library, but that's how you work. Just like using different tools. Like I like to use a code analyzer. I've always used Sonar Cube. I don't know if it's the best. I don't know if it's the worst. I just know that's what I use and it analyzes my code for bugs, for code smells, for potential refactoring, or the fact that VS Code has just a vast library of extensions. There's a reason for that. 
Use all of these extensions, not all of them, but use some of these extensions to make your job easier. For example, Visual Studio Code has its own code completion, kind of. However, I use this AI powered code completion extension on VS Code called Kite. Now, take this with a grain of salt. I do work with them on an affiliate level. You can use whatever code analyzer you want if you want to use kite then i always have a link in the description below but tools like that that'll help you code they're there to do just that to help you code i mean you use a text editor or an ide whether it be anything from vim or something full-fledged like intellij you probably use a version control system like bitbucket or github or gitlab right so all of these tools are there to help you do your job all these libraries frameworks it's there to help you do your job just don't be afraid to take advantage of gosh i feel like there's so much more that i could go over but I, I want to leave off this video with just have fun with it. I know it can be stressful at times. You know, you're trying to keep up with your team or for your boss or you have tight deadlines or anything like that. So sure, there can be times where you need to just hunker down and get it done. But at the end of the day, what's this all for if you can't scuba? <laughs> hey, did one of you tell Stanley that I have asthma? Because I don't. If it gets out, they won't let me scuba. If I can't scuba, then what's this all been about? What am I working toward? I'm sorry, I couldn't resist, but really, what is this all for if you can't enjoy doing it? Well, maybe a paycheck, but you gotta enjoy yourself along the way. Because you know what they say, if you do what you love, you never have to work a day in your life, which I think is complete crap. There are always gonna be unpleasantries along the way, like upset clients, tight deadlines that stress you out a little bit, or, or if you own your own business doing all of your taxes when you'd rather be coding or making videos. <laughs> but when you put those headphones on in the morning with your cup of coffee in hand and you're ready to tackle the day, just hunker down and get to coding, those should be the enjoyable time. Don't overthink it too much, which I know it's easy to do, but it's a much better feeling when you just have fun with it. I appreciate you watching this video. I appreciate you subscribing to the channel and liking this video if you did do that as well. And I think that's all I have to say on the matter.